In this video, we'll talk about how to manage your real estate investments. We'll talk about everything from finding tenants to finding property managers. It's going to be a good one. In this video, we'll discuss how to find a rental property to buy. How can MashVisor help you find a rental property? Property inspections, setting your rental price, finding and screening tenants, tenant applications, how to prepare a unit for tenants. And we'll talk about when and how you should use a property manager. Navigate the video using the chapters in the timeline below. So let's start off by saying I'm feeling under the weather today. I don't look my best. I'm sweating. It's a thing. I don't sound my best, uh, but we're here and it's residential real estate and it never sleeps. So we're going to do our best. How to find a rental property to buy. The most important factor to consider when purchasing a rental property is the location. It's important to find a neighborhood that is desirable to renters. The closer the property is to amenities like public transportation, restaurants, and shopping, the more attractive it will be to potential tenants. It's also important to find a property that is in good condition. Remember that you will be responsible for any repairs or maintenance that is needed. So it's important to find a property that doesn't need a lot of major work. Once you've found a few potential properties, it's time to start negotiating with sellers. It's important to get the best possible price on a property. And remember, the goal is to make a profit when you rent it out. How can MeshVisor help you find a rental property? MeshVisor is a real estate data analytics platform that helps investors find and analyze investment properties. Our platform uses data from multiple sources to provide accurate and up-to-date information on properties around the United States. To find a rental property, simply enter your criteria into our search filters. You can search by location, price, property type, and more. And once you've found a property that meets your criteria, you can use our investment calculator to help you calculate your return on investment. So you found a property. What do you do now? First, uh, make sure the property that you're considering is zoned to do what you want to do. To do this, check with your local zoning department or visit your city or county website to verify this information. When I was in sales, I encountered a lot of homes that had what one would call an in-law suite, a small series of connected rooms with a private entrance. It had a small kitchenette, usually a sink with a small refrigerator and a stove, but it would sometimes be listed as a multifamily but the city did not recognize it as such. So you have to be careful. If you want to be on par with the law in whatever kind of property you buy, as one should be, just make sure that you're buying and leasing in accordance with your jurisdiction. That's really what's important. Once you've confirmed that the property is zoned for your purpose, take a look at the building itself. Uh, look at the utilities. How many water tanks are there? How many furnaces does it have? Certain municipalities have laws stating in order to be a legal multifamily, for example, you have to have separate utilities. And that's a huge expense on an investor on a budget. Next, check with your local building department to see if there are any permits required for your intended use of the property. If so, of course, make sure that you obtain the necessary permits before moving forward with the purchase. Do a property inspection. Before buying property, it's always a good idea to have a professional inspection done. It may help you identify any problems that may need to be fixed or help you discover anything that would potentially make you want to cancel the deal before any money is exchanged. A home inspection is an examination of the current condition of a property. It's usually conducted by a, a professional home inspector who has had training and uh, received certifications to perform such examinations. The inspector will go through the building and check for any problems that could potentially be hazardous to the occupants or cause extensive or expensive repairs. This includes, but it's not limited to, uh, checking the structure, the electrical system, plumbing, heating and cooling, insulation, ventilation, and more. How much does an inspection cost? The cost of an inspection can vary depending on the size and age of the property, as well as the complexity of the job. However, it's typically a few hundred dollars. When you call, they'll ask for the square footage of the property and they'll base their price off of that. It should be noted that this step is optional. You do not have to conduct an inspection before you buy a property. In fact, many people choose not to as taking a home or a building as is can be used as incentive for a seller to accept a lower offer, knowing there will be less hiccups along the way. Setting your rental price. Now that you have a rental property that is ready to be leased out, uh, before you look for tenants, you must decide on your rental rate. To appropriately price your rental property, you will want to perform a rental market analysis to know the average rental rate of comparable rental properties in the area. And this way you won't overcharge or undercharge your tenants. This can be a huge topic in itself. So I will link to a full article on our blog entitled how to set the right 
rent price for your investment property. And I'll leave it in the description below. So from the perspective of managing your rental investments, let's talk about some landlording basics that you should be sure you have covered while getting into the business. Once you acquire the property, how do you find quality candidates? There are a number of ways to find quality tenants once you have acquired an investment property. You can use traditional methods such as advertising in newspapers or online. You can use a property management company. Uh, you can also screen potential tenants yourself by doing a credit check and a rental history check. And that's really important. If you're looking for quality tenants, it's of the utmost importance that you do your research first. You want to find tenants who will pay their rent on time that will take care of your property. Here are some steps to help you find some quality tenants. The first step is to determine what kind of tenant you're looking for. Are you looking for a family to stay in your property? Uh, maybe a group of students, a professional? Do you have a commercial building and you want to have a small bakery in there? Once you know who you are looking for, you can uh, better narrow down your results. If you're advertising your property, make sure to include information that will attract the type of tenant that you're looking for. For example, if you're looking for a family, include information about the school district and amenities nearby. If you're looking for a group of students, include information about the property's proximity to campus. In addition to advertising, you can also use a property management company, like I mentioned. A property management company can find potential tenants, and as we'll talk of shortly, they can also run your investments for you in the long term. Application. Have whomever shows interest in your unit fill out an application. An application is a document designed to give a landlord some information about a potential tenant and their rental history. Here are some things that should and should not be included in a tenant application. On the should list, uh, a tenant's full name, their current address, a phone number, an email address, employment information, a tenant's rental history, some references, and emergency contact information. Things that should not be included are inaccurate information, of course, lies of any kind, a social security number is not needed at the initial application, credit card information is not needed, bank account information is not usually needed, and of course, any information about race or religion, anything that can be discriminatory should not be included on the application as well. The tenant can also submit pay stubs, W-2s or 1099s from the previous year as verification of their stated income. Screen tenants. Once you have some applicants, you should screen them like there is no tomorrow. You can uh, screen potential tenants by doing it yourself. You can run a credit check and a rental history check, even a background check. And this combination can cost as little as $30, $35, depending on where you go. And it can be wrapped up and paid for by the applicant with an application fee. Uh, and again, when combined, this will give you an idea of whether or not the potential tenant is reliable. When you are screening potential tenants, it's important to remember that everyone does make mistakes, however. You want to find tenants who can have a history of paying their rent on time and taking care of the property. If you find a tenant with a few late payments or damage to their previous rental property, I wouldn't necessarily discount them uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be a bad tenant. You should just simply investigate further before inviting them to live in or rent out your building. Once you have narrowed down your search to a few potential tenants, you can invite them to tour the property. And this is a great time to interview them and try and get a better feel for the applicant beyond what you see on paper. And you can also introduce them to your existing tenants as applicable to make sure that everybody will get along well. Next, rent collection. Once you have tenants, a duty that comes with managing your rental investments is collecting rent. There are a number of methods of collecting rent, including collecting checks, direct deposit, the mail, and there are electronic methods as well. Make sure you choose one that is swift and favorable for most of your tenants. To discourage uh, late rent payments, have a clear policy on rent in the lease and you have to enforce those policies. For instance, charge a late fee when a tenant pays late. Also, remind them of the possibility of being evicted should they continue to pay late. In any case, if there is a need to evict a tenant, make sure you follow the local laws to avoid yourself some serious legal problem. Rental property accounting. To successfully manage a rental property business, you need to keep great records of all of your rental income, expenses, taxes, and transactions. However, doing a rental property accounting on your own can be rather complicated especially for first-time landlords. So you can hire an accountant to do your taxes and manage your accounts or hire a bookkeeper and keep tabs on things yourself. Next, let's talk about how to prepare a unit for tenants. This is an important process because it will ensure that your unit is clean and safe for 
your next round of tenants to move into. The first step is to deep clean the unit when it's vacant. This means cleaning all the surfaces, including walls, floors, ceilings, and windows to make it livable for someone new. You should also clean any carpets or rugs in the unit. If there are stains, make sure to treat them before your new tenants arrive. Usually a landlord will paint the walls of a unit before new tenants move in as well. And this can brighten up the space and make it feel more fresh and new. If you do decide to paint, make sure that you use neutral colors that will appeal to a wide range of people. Next, you will need to make any necessary repairs. This could include fixing broken appliances, patching up holes in walls as needed, or replacing damaged flooring. Any repairs made should be made before the tenants move in, so you and they don't have to deal with it afterward. Remember, this is a rental property. You do not have to go crazy here, as renters are notoriously hard on units they lease. And there's a great chance whatever you add to a unit meaning carpets, murals, even toilets may get damaged or destroyed. So my advice is always to present the basics and let the leases make the space. You should do a walkthrough of the unit with tenants before they move in. This will give you a chance to show them around and point out any features of the unit they may not have seen or know how to utilize. Also, give them a building tour to show where they can park their car, where the laundry room is located. If there's a pool, what are the hours and how do you enter the area? This is also a really great opportunity to answer any questions that they may have, and that will cut down on the phone calls you will receive from them later on. Many landlords differ on who is responsible for setting up utilities for their tenants. And this includes electricity, gas, water, and trash service. Sometimes you as the building owner will need to contact the appropriate company to have these services turned on in your tenant's name. Of course, this includes giving the company your tenant's contact information. Other times in the lease agreement, it may stipulate that it is the responsibility of the tenant to set up their own utilities. This is often the case in larger buildings where where there are already existing accounts set up. In this instance, you will need to provide your tenant with the information for the existing account so they can contact the company and have their names added. Finally, present the tenant the lease they signed and reiterate in writing who handles some of the following. Who is going to cut the grass at the property? Who is responsible for shoveling snow? What is the process for maintenance requests? When is the rent due? What are the late fees associated with the rent? How long of notice does a tenant have to provide before they can move out? Are there any restrictions on who can live in the unit? What is the length of the lease? Agreed upon procedures should one want to cut a lease short. What is the policy for renewing leases? Is there a security deposit? And if so, how much? And what is it for? You should go over all of these things again with your tenant at move-in so there are no surprises later on. By doing this, you will ensure both yourself and your tenant are on the same page from the start and that each party understands their responsibilities. Where to find a property manager to hire? There are a few different ways to find a property manager to hire. You can start by asking other landlords if they have any recommendations, if they know anyone who is good at their job, who they have been happy with in the past. You can look online for property managers in your area. There are many websites that list property managers and can provide reviews from other landlords. And this can be a great way to get an idea of who's valuable and who others think would be good for your business. You can also look for property management companies in your area. These companies will have multiple property managers working for them, so you'll be able to choose one that you think would be a best fit for you and your property. I've seen actually real estate agents broker a deal with a landlord and a tenant and then get asked to stay and help run the property for the owner. And that seems to work out quite well as they're already in that business. Uh, the management business is in the same genre that the agent is already involved in. Before you hire a property manager, be sure to interview them and ask them questions about their experience working in the industry, how they would handle different situations that may come up, what their policies are on things like rent collection and maintenance, how they communicate with landlords and tenants. Take note of their personality and perceived management style and hire according to your wants and needs. They will very much be the face of your business, so you have to make sure they're happy with how they will be representing you. I've seen property owners who are rather mild-tempered, for example, and they look for very assertive property managers who will play the bad cop for them, so to speak. So it's something to consider when hiring for your business. How does a property owner pay a property manager? Typically, a property owner will pay a property manager a salary or a percentage of the rent that's collected for each month. For example, if the rent is $1,000 per month and the property manager charges 
say 10%, the property owner would pay the property manager $100 per month. The property manager may also charge a fee for finding new tenants. For example, if they charge a $200 fee for finding a new tenant, the property owner would pay that fee when a new tenant is found. The property manager may also charge additional fees for uh, dealing with maintenance issues or handling paperwork. Be sure to ask the property manager about all of their fees before you agree to work with them. You should also have a written agreement with the property manager that outlines all of the responsibilities and what you will be paying them, and how and how much they are paid should be a reflection of the work being done. Uh, are they going to be doing repairs as needed themselves? Are they qualified and able to do such things? That's a good question. Are they getting to stay in a unit for free uh, on the property as part of their compensation? These are things that you have to work out at hiring. So there you are. I hope that was very helpful. Uh, if you're a new investor and you are researching properties, but you don't really know where to start, uh, let MashVisor help you. Uh, we are an online platform that helps you find and analyze investment properties across the country. As always, you can get a free seven day trial by using the link in our description. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Michael. Have a great day and I will see you next week.